Hello everybody, this is Gregory with How I Lost Over 100 Pounds and I've kept it off for 30 plus years where there should be no hesitance in your weight loss and maintenance. Today we're going to talk about whether or not you should implement or use what people would perceive to be unhealthy ways to lose weight like laxatives and so forth to achieve your goal and then later on figure something out to maintain it. Now before we begin, if you need help with weight loss, contact me through the Clarity FM link found here in the episode notes. Also check out my website, which has hundreds of articles and recipes, my two books, which you can find on Amazon. If you like podcasts on Apple and Spotify, you can find The Awakened Man, which I've had since 2017, and also The Cinema Rag, which is about movies. And also, lastly, if you appreciate my content, there's a link for PayPal. Now, I'm not naive to think that there aren't people who use unhealthy ways to lose weight quickly. And we, we are an instant gratification, kind of pop a pill mentality. We have an episode not that long that we did on Azempic, which is the diabetes drug that a lot of wealthy or celebrity people are taking to lose weight. We talk about some of the health hazards of that. And then there's always the tried and true rapid weight loss things. You, you think of wrestlers who will, to, to meet their weight, will go into steam rooms or dry saunas and spend hours in there. And certainly women who will use laxatives which if you don't know, it, it helps you defecate a lot, or water pills, diuretics, to pee stuff out. Um, they will do that quite a bit as well to, to lose weight. And then you look at bulimia nervosa. So bulimia nervosa is binge eating a lot of food rapidly, but then purging it. And when we think of purging it, we typically think of vomiting it out, but purging it could also include diuretics and laxatives and and other things as well. Now, are these things healthy? Let's say you're juicing, you know, there's all these radical diets. Are these things smart to do in the in the goal of like, well, I'll do whatever it takes to lose weight. We've talked about it here in a previous episode how there's studies that show that people will do drastic things to stay thin. They'd rather have a special education child, they'd rather have a divorce, they'd rather use a year in their life than be fat. I mean, this is that fat paralysis, that fat fear that that is in gripping America. And the funny thing is that I mean, we all know what we're supposed to do to, to stay regular weighted, so why aren't we doing it? Right? It's this, this, this disordered relationship we have with food and, and other factors that have, are, are making us the most overweight we've ever been in American history and in human history. So would I condone some radical weight loss regimen, like severe caloric uh, restrictions and over, overall to, to get to your 20-pound milestone loss or 30-pound milestone loss, and then at that point... Okay, well, I'll figure something out because the, why do I say I'll figure something out? Because you're overweight because you have a disordered relationship with food. I was overweight because I had a disordered relationship with food. And we continue to be that way because we have a disordered relationship with food. And we all have the self-restraint to maybe crash diet for a specified amount of time, but you can't do that forever, right? You can't be juice fasting every day of your life forever. You can't be taking diuretics or taking water pills because, I mean, these will hurt your health, pernicious to your health. But there's a reason why the statistic is 80% of people who lose weight more than 50 pounds or more regain it back within three years. There's a reason for this. There's a reason for this. is because these people didn't have... An, a normal relationship with food. They, they associate emotions with food, right? So when I'm happy, I eat when I'm sad, when I eat when I'm depressed, when I eat when... I... And so you gain it back. And this is certainly the way I was. I talk about it over Revelations of a Weight Loss Warrior, the playlist, the personal playlist, after I lost my weight. I was like, great, I lost my weight, but I still have a disordered relationship with food. And it took me years, especially in my college years, where I would starve during the week, weigh myself on Fridays, and then binge, binge, binge over the weekend. And I did that for years. So it takes time. Now, so would I recommend people to do that and then figure it out later on? No, I don't. Because again, I can't, I can't tell you. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm not a doctor. But I would just say from my personal experience, no, 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 no. It's not going to do this. And, but I'm also a realist and understand that a lot of people do this. A lot of people do unhealthy things to lose weight. Whether it's justified or not, whether they want to blame their spouse, oh, you know, I starve myself or vomit in the bathroom three times a day because you want me to be thin. You know, no, we have to be responsible and just be accountable for what we're doing.
doing to ourselves. Right? Nobody forced me to shove food down my mouth. Yeah, there are going to be predisposing factors that maybe made you turn to food, like childhood trauma and other things, but ultimately we have to be accountable. We talk about that here. Let's not be a victim. So I would tell you, no. Look, if you're 30 pounds overweight or more than that, and you need to lose the weight, though it's harder in the long run, do the therapy, do the deep work, do all these things, and ultimately this will help you in the long run because then you've disassociated emotions from your food. Because if we do the deep work early on, then later on it's gonna be easier. Whereas it's, it's like a boat, right? If your boat has a hole in it and you're just paling water out of it, yeah, eventually you're gonna get tired. It's better to fix the boat and then it'll be easier later on. But we live in this world where we want a quick fix. We live in this world where I think there's a certain level of collective depression in America right now. And part of it is we need to do the hard work. So the hard work is, no, I'm not going to tell you to, to, to do these things like you take diuretics or laxatives and so forth, because you're probably doing them right already. If, you're already. if you're already thinking about doing it, you've probably been doing it for some time. But I would not tell you to. I would tell you do the long run, do the long-term thing, and in the long run, that's going to help you. And the big thing is do the childhood trauma, do the deep work to remedy the childhood trauma, and disassociate emotions from food and all these things. And then eventually, once you do that, then you can start losing the weight because you're not gonna be turning to food all the time. You'll be like my dog who only eats when he's hungry. Things we talked about here before, but definitely I would not recommend drastic unhealthy things to lose weight. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you wanna be honest and talk about unhealthy things that you've done, hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Until next time, take care, God bless, and pray.